For this next section of my presentation, I would like to look at optimizing the calculations for denatrant content in the ethanol production laboratory. The commonly used ASTM D5501 method has specific instructions that mass relative response factors, MRRFs, should be determined by analyzing a prescribed sample made of ethanol, approximately 96%, methanol, 0.1% and heptane 3.9% all in mass percentages. In this case, heptane is a substitute for the denaturant in the sample. The MRRF values are calculated from the ratio of the ethanol and methanol response factors to that for heptane. The method makes a stipulation that the user can use typical MRRF values if the user does not want to measure these values specific to their instrument. The typical MRRF values do not seem to match well with the performance of current GC hardware. The method does not use traditional calibration practices, where a set of standards are used to create a standard curve. This method uses an internal comparison where the ratios of peak areas are used to calculate the amount of content. The MRRF values are critical to getting a more accurate result. In the calculation of results, it is necessary to obtain area values for methanol, ethanol, and for the sum of all other peaks as denaturant. The calculation of the MRRF values is quite easy. The peak area from the analysis is divided by the weight percent to give the response factor. The response factor for heptane is divided by the response factors for ethanol and methanol respectively. The typical values from the method are 3.2 for methanol and 2.06 for ethanol. Because the methanol peak is so small in most of these analyses, a change in its MRRF value will not have much effect on the overall content calculation. However, the ethanol peak is a very, very large peak, and even a modest change in its MRRF value can have a significant effect on content. In a real-world example, entering the derived MRRF value into the content calculation spreadsheet shows that the volume percent values can have a significant change. In this example, where the only parameter that is changed is the MRRF correction value, there is a difference of approximately 0.42% in volume percentage for denaturant. With the tighter limits on the allowable denaturant levels, this could make a difference in whether or not the product can be shipped. Often, I will be asked why the denaturant content value is higher than what is expected, even when appropriately determined MRF values are being used. In many cases, this will be caused by including in the denaturant area peaks that do not come from the added denaturant. These non-denaturant peaks are usually referred to as fusel peaks, and their contribution to the overall denaturant value can be significant enough to cause concern. To understand this, it is necessary to understand that many peaks beyond methanol ethyl are also coming from the ethanol distillate and are fermentation based. These peaks elute in the same area where the denaturant is being grouped, so their presence is inflating the area for denaturant. This slide shows a comparison of a denatured ethanol sample on the bottom with just denaturant on the top chromatogram. It is clear to see that the denatured ethanol sample in the same area of the analysis has more peaks present than the denaturant. In this case, the ethanol distillate is providing fusel content which is counted as denaturant. When a comparison is made between the denatured ethanol product, the blue trace, and the undenatured 200 proof ethanol, red trace, it is clear that there are peaks in the undenatured ethanol that are identifiable in the denatured group range. In a closer look, some of the denaturant peaks are observed as standalone peaks, while some are covoluting with some of the denaturant peaks. The total denaturant content needs to be corrected for this fusel peak contribution, or the product could be deemed out of specification and unable to ship. In this example, the denatured and undenatured ethanol samples were analyzed using identical methodology. The areas were calculated identically between both chromatograms, 
in the case of the undenatured ethanol sample, the denatured value is actually the total area for the fusel peaks in this chromatogram. Calculating the raw content involves correcting the area for differences in response using the MRRF standard, calculate the corrected mass percent, correct for the water content. In this example, one mass percent of water was used. The mass percent is converted into volume percent using density correction. As a result, the crude denaturing calculation yielded 3.5% by volume of denaturing. The calculation of the raw fusel contribution is performed in much the same manner, in that the same type of calculation as for the denatured sample. In this respect, the fusel content contributes 0.24% toward the total 3.5% in the crude denatured value. Subtracting this value would give you a corrected denaturant content but there is one more tweak to this methodology that can be made. This tweak of the calculation is quite minor and can be ignored without much consequence. However, it does show that you can get a more accurate value by applying the proper corrections. In short, with the denatured ethanol containing about 3.5% denaturant, then it also contains about 96.5% undenatured ethanol. Therefore, the 0.24% fusel contribution is based on 1.036 times the amount of undenatured ethanol that exists in the denatured sample. Therefore, correcting the 0.24% fusel contribution for the volume correction ratio gives a net 0.23% fusel content correction for the undenatured sample. Subtracting this from the original 3.5% use a corrected denaturant content of 3.27%. It is possible to continue with more volume correction calculations, but the calculations are already reaching the point of diminishing returns, so more correction will not result in a perceptible benefit. With the narrowing of the allowable denaturant content, care must be taken to make sure that all method procedures are performed properly. To summarize, Densities for the denaturant and product should be determined at the proper temperature and used in any mass to volume conversion. Use of an instrument specific MRRF value to calculate the mass percent content is really not an option. And running the undenatured ethanol product provides an amount of contributing fusel peaks that can be subtracted from the total denaturant. If anyone would like to receive the Excel spreadsheet that combines all of these GC calculations, please contact me at the email address shown.